Oh, g'day. Keithy here, thanks for joining me again. Glad to have you here. So I'm just packing the last couple of things now for my Cape York trip. Really keen to head off this year and no doubt you guys are too, or even next year if you're just planning now for next year's trip. But often you know what happens, you go through the car, you think, all right, no worries, we've got everything here, we're ready to go. And you get on the road and you go, oh, we forgot something. It happens to anyone, it can happen to the best. So that's why I'm here, because I'm doing a top 10 video for you right now on the things that people often forget to take or overlook when they're getting ready to go on a Cape York trip. So yeah, grab yourself a couple of guys, a couple of minute video here for you on some things that people often overlook to take on a Cape York trip. So I've put this as the first thing that people often forget or overlook to take on a Cape York trip and it's a fire extinguisher, it's pretty simple. But you know what, if you don't have one and you need one, you're going to wish you got it. First thing I reckon anyone should take on any trip, let alone just a Cape York trip, is a fire extinguisher. I've got many and I replace them every year. Once a year I replace them. If I don't use them, they're still good. You can store them on their side, upright, anything like that. Every month I go around and I'll just give these things a rotate, a bit of a shake. I don't um, discharge them because obviously you want to keep them full. Check the gauges, all things like that. Mine lives in the car permanently, as you can see up the back here still in its box so that it is protected. So if I throw anything else in the car for whatever reason, it's up there in an easy to get place, not too hard. It's at the back where all of my stuff is. I can get it through the back door if I have to. So it's both towards the front and towards the back of the car. Um, you know, I could take more than one if you have to, obviously, but um, yeah, there's no need to be greedy. And if you have a look at this video in just a second that Shandy took for me, this was a trip that we did back in 2016, I believe it was. So quite a while ago, it'll show you the importance of a fire extinguisher because that was literally what you're going to see was on the very first day of that Cape York trip. Look at what is he doing? Fuck, there's a fire, a car on fire and he's running to rescue. He's got a fire extinguisher. Nice one, Keith. Well done, mate. That's his battery in the back of his car here. And apparently it was a little bit overloaded. Yeah. So the next thing that's often overlooked, maybe it's a bit excessive, is fuel. A lot of people require extra fuel for their vehicles to go long distance. But I want to just let you guys know that you don't actually need all the fuel in the world to do a Cape York trip. There's not a lot of distance. I think the, the biggest distance between fuel stops anywhere from Laura all the way up to the tip is only about 140, 150 kilometers. So if you can't do 150 kilometers in your four wheel drive without needing fuel, there might be a little bit of an issue with your fuel tank, I think, or the thirst. Not only that, guys, taking extra fuel requires you to store it up nice and high. Why is that? Well, it's actually legal to carry fuel inside a vehicle. So unless you've got a wheel carrier on the back that holds um, jerry cans, you're gonna have to put it up here on the roof. And you know, by putting it up on the roof here, you're probably gonna use about another two liters to the hundred in fuel, just because of wind resistance from these jerry cans. Believe it or not. And you know what? Two liters to the hundred over about 800 kilometers or 900 kilometers, you'll probably save that anyway by not having the weight and the wind resistance on the top of your car, especially when you're on the highway coming from wherever home is up into the slower tracks. Not only that, who wants to put it up there? It's gonna get dirty and dusty and all that kind of stuff. And you know what? You probably end up putting dirt and dust into your fuel tank when you're using these things. So save your jerry cans unless it's an absolute emergency to take them with fuel, leave them at home. There's plenty of fuel along the way. Yes, it costs a little bit more than what you'd pay in town, but I tell you what, you're probably saving by not carrying all of that extra weight and all of that extra wind resistance. Another thing that often gets overused, overlooked, overwanted, is the toolkit. So there's no point 
taking your entire tool kit, like literally this here, it's probably a good 60 kilos worth of tools. That's weight that you don't want to put in your car because you're going to pay for it in fuel. And not only that, you might be over GVM when you're on your way up to Cape York. So what's a good alternative? Well, this is what I do with tools and supplies for the vehicle. You get a milk crate. And if you can't fit your tools in that, that you need to take and spare parts, like whether it's brake pads or whatever kind of spare parts you often take on your four wheel driving trips, if you can't fit it in here, don't take it because there's no point bringing every spare part you've got for your four wheel drive. You're gonna weigh so much, you're gonna take up all the space in your vehicle. You get in trouble and believe you me, ladies and gentlemen, the police do weigh vehicles on the way up to Cape York. They have stations up there they weigh them and if you're over GVM, they're going to tell you right there and then you can't keep going until you take a bit of weight out. And you don't want to be dropping the kids off and heading up without them. So make sure you keep it as light as you can. Small box, you can fit all the basics in there. You can still fit a bit extra spray, some spare parts, a shock absorber, little things like that. You don't need every tool that you've got here because let's face it, you're not going to use all the tools on your car anyway. Get the basics. Make yourself a small tool kit, some small spares, oil filter, oil, etc. stuff like that. Keep it simple, keep it light, and you'll keep yourself out of trouble. It's a great idea on a Cape York trip to have some literature. Maybe have a bit of homework before you leave, have a bit of a read. This one is Explore Australia by Camper Trailer. Um, it's a really good book. There's many, many books that have got a lot of information about Cape York in them, so check that out. You can also get apps like the HEMA app, which you see here. That has got so much information and provided you've done your updates and all of that kind of stuff, the HEMA map app is so good. I've had the one that you're seeing right now for well over 10 years, maybe 15 years to be honest. You can mark your tracks, waypoints, points of interest, etc, etc. So if you go going for a trip anywhere, it doesn't have to be Cape York, you go through the app, you don't need phone service. As long as you've got Wi-Fi on your phone, you're all sweet. That way you can get your location, or GPS I should say. That way you can get your location on the mapping. So you don't need to have phone service while you go out on a trip like Cape York. You can find all of the cool things that you want to see along the way without needing phone service. It's the best thing ever. And you can use it on your phone. You get an iPad. You can put it on an uh, Apple Mac or whatever other Apple products are out there. I'm sure there's a non-Apple version of HEMA that's definitely worth looking. But I think worth the money, guys, especially if you're getting halfway up there and say something's changed and you need to get somewhere and you forgot where you got to go, you're not familiar with the areas, Plenty of information in those apps and in these books. So have a read, keep track of what you're doing, keep track of where you want to go. It makes very, very easy work of planning a trip up to Cape York. Don't forget those essentials too. A lot of time you get that busy packing in the morning before you got to go. It's a mad rush to try and find everything and you forget to take your shampoo and your soap and your toothbrush. Now don't fear because in the, in the places that you're gonna drive through on your way up, you can get from the shops all of the essentials there. Even Cooktown, Weeper's got a lot of things. The smaller towns like Cohen and whatnot have also got some products that you can get. But if you like a special breed of deodorant or whatever you might take with you, then you might wanna pack it. So take your time and make sure you pack your essential shower and smell good items. On the topic of looking and smelling good, I always keep a couple of these things up in the back of the car here. They float around every now and then but they're not gonna hurt anything, it's toilet paper. You're gonna to need to go to the toilet at some stage, so it's a good idea to make sure you've got some TP. Again, you can get that everywhere. Make sure you've got a couple. I like to keep two rolls at all times in the car on around town trips. If I'm going to Cape York, I might take a half a dozen. And that way you know you're gonna be right if you need to go for a walk. And that also leads to toilet etiquette on a Cape York trip. A lot of the places, especially on the telly track where there aren't exactly toilets for you to go, you'll find that people just go here, there and everywhere on the surface and it's a bit annoying to have to walk through someone else's business or across other people's toilet paper. A good idea is to take a little tiny shovel. I've got mine in the drawer and it's easy to access right here. So if you need to go to the toilet, please get a small shovel. They don't take up anything, literally takes no time to get it out, open it up, run down and give yourself a little bit of a hole, dig one to put it in and then you can bury your business afterwards. It's not only respectful and gives you a little bit of 
joy when you walk away that someone's not going to step in your business but it's also good for the other people that come in maybe the next day the day after you leave someone doesn't get a little bit of a surprise package from you down here with the gauge tire pressures you wouldn't believe it but a lot of people forget to even check the car before they go but one of the big things you need to check is your tire pressures if they're under inflated and you've got a massive load on there you risk blowing the tire on the highway even before you even get to cape york and then you get on the dirt roads and letting your tires down is a very good idea on the dirt roads. Once it starts to get a little bit rough and dirty, drop them down. You can take them down to two thirds of what they normally are. So say you normally run 30 pounds, you can go down to 20 pounds. Make sure you drop your speed if you drop your pressure. Uh, so like if you drop from 30 down to 20 pounds, you want to probably not, not go any faster than about 70 k's an hour, but it'll tell you what, it'll make the ride a lot better and it'll make it easier on your car as well. You can get one of these things from super cheap for next to nothing a little compressor from super cheap or autobahn or bcf any of the four-wheel drive places they've got air compressors give it a test before you go to use it for the first time if it's something that you don't use all the time but i tell you what if you get a flat or if you've got to put your spare on and you find that it's got no air in it it's a very good tool to have and guess what it's one thing to have all the literature on cape york but it's another thing to actually get there and find somewhere to stay Make sure you go through all of the places that you're going to stay and book. If you haven't booked a place and you go through, especially in peak time, like the school holidays, you're not going to have anywhere to stay. You know, and a bush camping absolutely everywhere. And sometimes they can even be hard to find, especially if you don't have a map. Make sure you do your bookings, do your homework before you go up there. That way you don't get a nasty surprise. Best thing if you're in a big group too. Make sure you've got the room for everybody coming along. They'll give you prices and some of that stuff you can even prepay before you get up there, save yourself some moolah. That's also a good idea to do pre-trip inspections, checks, whatever you want to call them. Make sure that everything is all right within your engine bay and underneath the car. Now, if you're not familiar with all this kind of stuff, and not everybody is a mechanic at home, right? Some people don't have very much experience with mechanical stuff, and that's okay. If you're not sure of what's going on in here, take it to your mechanic, get them to give them a once over. Check all your transmission and engine oils and all that kind of stuff. They can do a complete pre-trip check for you. And if you need anything serviced, if your car's going to be due while you're up on the trip to Cape York, get it serviced early. It's not going to hurt you and it's going to save you from running out of oil or having any kind of mishaps while you're on the trip. In your rush to leave home, you might forget some things. There's one thing that sometimes happens in Cape York and that is that the FPOS machines breakdown sometimes they have a uh, failure with their connections and whatnot so you're going to want to take some of these bad boys along with you because the fpos being out means you're not going to be able to fill your car up you're not going to be able to buy food or necessities pay for your camping little things like that make sure you take a bit of cash but not the entire bank because if your car accidentally also gets broken into and it does happen like i mentioned before in the previous video you're not going to lose all your cash that way keep it secure Take it with you just in case for incidental moments when you might need it. Last one on the list is food and drink. So you don't want to get up to Cape York. You won't get up to Cape York without food or drink, will you? You've got to have dinner, you've got to have breakfast, lunch, all that kind of stuff. In saying that, you've only got so much room in your vehicle, so you also don't want to overpack. On your trip up, before you even get to Laura, you're going to have plenty of supplies on the way. Lots of shops, service stations, things like that where you can buy your tucker. It does get a little bit sparse as you go north, but there are products that you can get from the shops, both at Cape York in Seisha. There's two shopping centres you can go to there. Weeper is a big centre for shopping and all the products that you're going to need. They'll have everything that you get in most towns, including a pharmacy. Cooktown as well. So between the three of those, that's a Cape York trip where you can get and top up your fridge and your supplies. Generally, good idea. What I normally take is I'll fill the fridge up with the stuff that you're going to need for three, four, five days, something like that. I'll try and keep the perishables in one big Woolies type bag and some softer stuff. I like to keep it up where it's not going to get damaged. Another bag too, with just incidentals like a packet of chips, some, some snacky type food to keep you going. Maybe some um, bottles of soft drink if you have a soft drink with your, your beverage at night or something sweet for the kids that doesn't require refrigeration or that can be stayed out, can stay out I should say, until it goes in the fridge when you're on your trip. 
it's all about weight, it's all about room in your car. All goes back to what you can fit within reason without taking too much. You don't want to get pulled up by the, the scalies on the way and get told that your car's a bit too heavy and you've got to take all of that stuff out where you're going to put it. So keep your weight down, only take what you need and remember that you can get supplies, including fuel, on your way up. Well, that's it. We're all packed. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Don't forget, Cape York is a great trip and everyone should enjoy their time there. So do exactly that. Take your time, relax. You don't have to drive at a million miles an hour to see everything in Cape York. It's safer for you, safer for your vehicle. And it's safer for everyone else on the roads if you just cruise along, take your time, enjoy it, take it in, make it the ride a lot more pleasant for everyone. And a few little steps I hope that I've helped you out with to make your trip and trip planning a lot easier. Anyway, guys, I'll catch you on the weekend for number three of the Cape York videos. Until then, thanks for watching and I'll catch you then.